Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are advised that the following program contains images and voices of people who've died. Last year, the small community of Yalata turned out to party for the town's first festival. There was singing, dancing, and at Yalata Primary School, a special guest from Japan visited to teach the kids about her hometown, Nagasaki. She shared the sad story of what happened after an American plane dropped an atomic bomb on Nagasaki during World War II. It wiped out an entire town in an instant and killed 60,000 people. The same thing happened to the Japanese city of Hiroshima too. Soon after the war ended, but the radiation stayed around a lot longer and some people are still suffering the consequences today. For the kids of Yalata, this lesson meant a lot because it's similar to some of the issues families here experience too. Yalata is home to the Pichinjara Ananu people, but many Maralinga Jajara people live here as well. They arrived in 1956 after being forced to leave the land they had lived on for thousands of years by the Australian government. It was taken so it could be used by Britain to test nuclear weapons and many Maralinga Jajara people ended up getting sick because of the radiation released. The test stopped in 1963, and many decades later, Maralinga was handed back to its traditional owners. We're giving it back to you. But the soil is still radioactive in some areas. After hearing about the people of Nagasaki, the kids of Yalata wanted to do something to express their support and understanding of what they went through. So they told their elders and the community about what they'd learnt. And together they all helped design a special sculpture as a gift to be placed in a memorial park in Nagasaki. We got the kids involved in it as well and because uh, we, we don't want them to ever... We need to pass our, uh, our skills on to our children so that so it'll never die. Once the sculpture was finished, some representatives from Yalata flew over to Japan to deliver it in person. They met with some of the survivors of the nuclear bombing to hear their stories and to share their own. Before officially revealing their gift, its design represents two hands holding up a pity dish, which were traditionally used to hold water or babies. It's called Tree of Life, Gift of Peace. A beautiful symbol of support and understanding from one nuclear community to another.